This is going to be a rather long video. Um, in it, I will work a number of problems. It'll be everything I have to say about connected objects. Uh, these are also known as Newton's Third Law problems. Um, and I'm going to show you how we solve all of them, really, while it certainly to a student might appear like there's great heaping many variations here. Uh, once you worked a few of them of different varieties, you realize that they're all very much alike. Um, so here's a typical one pictured. I've got two masses, a 5 kilogram and an 8 kilogram, and they're being pulled by some external force. You know, there's a, assume there's a string tied to that and someone's exerting a force. It would be not unlike my um, uh, little black gizmo I have, the one-dimensional air hockey table, um, when I hang a mass over the end. Um, because it can serve as a frictionless surface, and, and we can solve these problems with friction involved, but it just makes it a little easier to get us started. Um, every one of them is solved the exact same way. Here are the steps. Uh, you will, if you're still struggling with these, you will want to write this down. But here's the step to solve all of the connected objects problems. First thing you do is temporarily, just for a moment, replace the individual masses with total mass. Um, the, I'll, I'll, let me give you the steps, and then I'll go back and show you how they apply. Step two is, once you've done that, uh, total up the external forces. Now, this picture to our right, there's one external force. It's 52 newtons. There's an internal force. There's a, this string will have tension on it. But if the external force goes away, the internal force goes away. And so all we're really looking for is the external forces. Step three is uh, determine the acceleration of the system using Newton's second law. And then four, you go back to the original picture you had, and you draw free body diagrams for each of the individual objects. Uh, once you get the FBD drawn, you apply Newton's second and third law to determine any internal forces, and you're done. All right, so let's see how that works. Um, step one, temporarily replace the individual masses with the total mass. Well, I've drawn this picture here uh, where I took the 5 kilogram and the 8 kilogram, and I replaced them with the 13 kilogram. You don't necessarily have to redraw the picture. I just wanted to do that to uh, help anyone that was really struggling with this. So that's step one. Uh, let me write it down. Mass is 13 kilograms. Step two, total of the external forces. Again, that's just this 52 newtons. So I'll write that down. Determine the acceleration of the system using Newton's second law. Newton's second law is that uh, force equals mass times acceleration. Uh, sometimes I will write a sigma here. Um, uh, either way, it means the same thing. I find all the forces acting on something, and those forces will work together to give the mass a certain amount of acceleration. Um, now, I've got to take that out for just a second. And here is it rearranged in a form so that we can get acceleration. That's what we're trying to find out from this. Um, there's our particulars, 52 newtons and 13 kilograms. You do that math, it comes out to 4 meters per second squared. I will tell you, uh, typically I will pick masses such that they come out to some nice, you know, acceleration, 4 meters per second or 8 or something. But occasionally there will be some odd numbers, including like, you know, 6 and a third meters per second or, or just some odd number that seems as random as it can be. But just so that we can do the math in my head, I like to pick these numbers whenever possible. Sometimes, uh, based on angles and masses and number of objects, that's not a possible deal. Um, okay, so we're almost there. Um, we have to, we now know the acceleration of the system. It's four meters per second. Um, we, let's see, fact, let's do this so that we can remember how important that is. And um, now I need to do step through or step four rather draw a free body diagram on each object need a little running room so we're done with this I'm going to get rid of it so let's start say with the eight kilogram doesn't matter which one you start it with well I say that sometimes the math is a little easier based on which one you start with but this case really doesn't matter so here's the free body diagram for it it's got um, gravity pulling it down and the normal force pushing it up and those are nice but add up to zero and therefore bore us um, to the left and right, I have 52 newtons pulling to the right, and some tension in this string pulling to the left. We don't know what it is, but that's what we're looking to find out. Um, let me, while I'm here, I'm going to do a little cleanup work. Let's get rid of that. We just need to remember acceleration. 
and we're going to get rid of this because we don't need it anymore. So we've done step four, draw a free body diagram for each object. Well, we've done it for the first one. We'll do it for the second one in a minute. Um, but then it says apply Newton's second and third law. Well, that really maybe should be second and or third law. Um, Newton's second law is the sum of the forces. And um, uh, we're going to do that horizontally. There's Newton's second law. Now we're going to sum the forces in the x direction. Um, the x direction. Uh, and to do that, we have defined motion to be positive to the right. Because the, mo because the motion is going to go that way because the external force is pointing that direction, it is convenient to call it to the right as being positive. We did that subtly back when we were finding acceleration to be a positive number. You may not have noticed that. But anyway, that said, when I sum the forces, uh, that makes it a positive 52 newtons minus the tension. Minus because tension is in the negative direction. Don't mess that up. You have to keep track of which direction the forces are going. So that's the sum of the forces. And that's going to make this mass, which is 8 kilograms. There's another thing that students might mess up. We have done the free body diagram on the 8 kilogram object. So we have to take the mass of the 8 kilogram object. And that would be times 4 meters per second squared. Um, this Note again, this is the mass of the individual object times the acceleration of the entire system. Everything in here is going to be accelerating at the same rate. The 8 kilogram, the 5 kilogram, and the string for that matter. Um, so we do that. And you work that math out, and it comes out to 32 newtons. And then when you uh, just simplify, you get that T is equal to 20 newtons. And that, my friends, is where we were headed. The only questions I can ask you on this kind of problem is what's the acceleration and what is the tension or internal forces.